Check. I just wanna thank me for doing it when nobody made me For doing it while nobody pays me They can call it crazy, but they don't see it daily And I've been finding ways, don't give a damn if you hating And secretly waiting to see what I do next It feels like a huge flex, I reach in my two chest Never feel too pressed to depress, please miss me With any and all negative energy Ooh. What's going on everybody? We got another episode of a PNA to Off Topic Today we got Carlos Mujica, Cam Theory, Malin White We're all here, you know, about to have a great conversation You know, creatives always coming together, we love that we love to exchange that energy and uh, talk about each other's passions. But without further ado, we're going to jump into Malin White and who he is. Much love, bro. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you taking time out your day and coming out here. It means a lot. I know Appreciate you're a busy, busy me. man. So for you to come take the time out your day and come here means means, means a lot to us more than y'all know. So. Yeah, much love. Uh, Appreciate y'all having me. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Uh, always first things first. Um, kind of how heck starts is who are you today? Where'd you come from? That type of vibe. All the, all Shit, the. Where I, came, I came from Don's house before this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm from Austin, man. Born and raised. Austinite? Uh, yeah, yes, man, sir. born and raised. So I'm from the north side. Went to high school up there. Middle school, everything. Where'd you go to high school? Cedar Park. Cedar okay, Park. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, cool. You graduated 16? 18. 18. 18. Yeah. Okay, okay. You think I'm old, huh? Uh, I, I, I thought you were like our age or a little bit older. Yeah, because yeah. I know a few people who went to um, Cedar Park, but they're all older. Sure, um, yeah. They graduated with Thornhill. Okay. Yeah, and that's no. that's only uh, and I guess the only one that you was kind of around here just Paddock. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. All those dudes. Yeah. Cause now I don't know if you did you play sports or no. I did, but in high school I was in the marching band. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I was okay. In the drum line, so. okay. Going crazy at the yeah, games. You know, yeah, I understand. Snares, yeah, snares, snares go crazy. crazy. Yeah. Snares, go, the yeah. snares go crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, both those guys play baseball, so okay, nice. I don't know if you like. Follow them or not, but Paddock's in the MLB now, and Thornhill just. Oh, I do remember him. Yeah, yeah. 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 Chris Paddock. He was yeah. supposed to go to A and M, but uh, his grades weren't there. But he ended up getting drafted anyway, so he's balling the league. There you go. Um, but from North Austin, born and raised. When you, when you're a kid, um, now you do photography and all that. Was that something that was like you're always passionate about, or was that just something you kind of picked up later? It's funny, man, because I didn't know for a long time. You know, when like you look back on your life. And you're like, man, it all makes so much sense now looking back. That's how it was for me because I had a little camera growing up, a little digital camera. And I'd make skits or little funny videos with my friends and my neighbors, my brother's sister. Man, I was like 9, 10 years old. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't until I was about 18, 17, 18 when I picked up a camera again of like, yo, well, let me actually try and do something with it. Mm. So if I'd have thought back then, like, oh, man, I love making these little videos, did I think that I could still be as creative as for a full-time income? Nah, but... Blessing, man. It's also like a different world we live in nowadays. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure when we were kids, we would not have thought that the stage we're in life now, the money you can make from content creation, back then was like you're not gonna, like like uh, gaming, for instance. Like you're not gonna make any money being a gamer. Like so, it's, uh, yeah, me, yeah. Oh, for real though, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy how like all these years later, just stuff just advances and, and grows. You know what I mean, that's dope. Um, so off camera, we did mention that you were a gamer. So I want to get into a little bit of that because I didn't really get to talk to you, talk yeah. much about it with you. Um, but what, how long, how long, well, I guess when did you start gaming? I guess on the record, I'm not really much of a gamer anymore. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Personally, bro, I just had to take a step away from it. I'm I'm not, like, yep. I, I was understand. just so addicted. You know what I mean? Every yeah. second, every day. I mean, it's like. Dude, when I was playing, so the last game I played, Cobwives was Warzone. Same. When I stopped <laughs> playing, it was me and my homie Don. The last time I stopped playing with the whole Rebirth Island, I was, I, I'm not saying it's to brag, but just so you understand how yeah. no life I was, I was the top 0.01%. Mm. I was like, bro, I got I to gotta do something in real life, bro. Yeah. I was like, this shit sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm doing the same thing every day, just shitting on the same kids, and I'm like, like, what's the, I'm not going pro. Right? Yeah, you know, exactly. So I'm just fucking you got that, my life away that here, medium you know? where you're just really good, but it's like... It, you have yeah, nothing to well, play for. Yeah, exactly. You, know, so. you didn't stream or anything? Dude, that's funny, bro. Because like, that's where I got started, bro. I was like, doing gaming, streaming, and YouTube videos. And just like, like you know what I mean? Cut comms and like live comms, all that stuff when I was playing. And didn't even do it for that long. But then from there, transitioned into, like that was my first bit of like, okay, I'm, I'm in, the, in the camera world. I got yeah, the streaming yeah. stuff. Got the online building a social media brand, right? The esports stuff. So like... I know we kind of touched on it, but like, so with the esports events, like I was going to a ton of COD events, ton of COD events. Shout out my parents, bro. They helped me out. And I went to the COD events. The first one I went to was in Dallas. And I took like 
one of my homeboys, one of my homeboys backed out last minute. So I was like, oh, whatever, we're just going to go. Did you go to play or did you go to like as a fan? Just just a fan. A fan. Yeah. I honestly okay. didn't even know you could go have and, an open bracket. And play yeah, open, open dude, bracket. Open my mind. I was like, <laughs> dude, this is fucking lit. Like, yeah. I totally got to come back for this. So went there, absolutely loved it. And I, like I said, dude, I was just in the front row. I was screaming. And they had like these like PS4 posters you could just like write stuff on. And so my homie had one that said, Scump is my daddy. And I had one that said, Formal SB Poppy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ridiculous. I've song. probably seen them before. You know what I'm saying? You've probably yeah. seen those. If you, if you yeah. watched Pop back then, bro, you definitely did. Definitely and, seen that. I mean, thank God you forgot about it, bro. You were there at W Champs or no? Yeah. I, I, I watched when that. When the dynasty's been submitted, you know? I watched that a lot. Like, just that time of Call of Duty. So I probably saw you. Yeah. 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 So it's funny. There's a moment in Champs when they won. And there's a photographer named Nick. He goes by X Temp. Okay. He took a photo of me, and I'm like wearing a scum shirt, an optic shirt, and I'm like stretching my chest out, and there's like a flag behind me. Everyone's lit, and I have that photo. Really? My mom printed it out for my birthday. That's pretty lit. These years, and I keep it in my room and just remember, like, that was me doing it, and like, it's so powerful for me because when I was doing that, bro, like, I didn't get love. You know what I mean? I did get love from my homie Don, which is funny. Yeah. Bro. He was the first person to ever donate to me on stream, bro. He donated me a dollar, but. Bro, like, everyone else at school, other people in, like, my close circle, bro, weren't fucking with me. Yeah. Why would they, bro? I was a fucking laughing stock in the school, all that shit, but I didn't care. Yeah. I was like, bro, I'm at the COD events. I'm passionate. I'm here. I'm loving the community. I'm yeah. making friends. We're playing online. Like, it didn't matter. So, that was, like, the first thing. Like, I had a couple of things before, but this is the first thing that was, like, I was ostracized. You know what I'm saying? People did not accept me. I was not normal. People made fun of me, but I was just, like... With the whole Russ thing, I love Russ's music because of the mentality it gave me. I was just like, fuck you. I was like, yeah, fuck you. Facts. I'm going to do it. I didn't know what I was going to do. Like, I'm going to make it. I knew I was going to make it. I don't know what the fuck I was going to do. I thought it was gaming stuff at the time. But I was like, bro, it doesn't matter. I just love it. I'm going to follow it. And so I keep that in my room as just a, a memory. Just like maintain the passion, bro. Because I've always told myself passion will prosper. So I keep that as a little, little token. What, what got you into gaming? I've always been a gamer. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? My my dad got us a, a Wii. Well, I had a GameCube for my birthday when I was five, six years old. I feel like played the Wii, had a DS, like all the Pokemon, everything. It wasn't until I went to Australia. I went to Australia. I was a foreign exchange student, and I was so jet lagged, bro. I was so jet lagged. Well, actually, <coughs> let me backtrack, bro, because this is kind of... I'll tell you I'll tell you the full story because I think it's worth it, but it's yeah. not a crazy story. Yeah, so, go for it. I had this friend of mine, bro. And uh, I'm very passionate about mental health because of this scenario, bro. I had a friend of mine in eighth grade, bro, and he had attempted suicide. And he was alive because I was, took, like, calling my mom, and she was able to get an ambulance to his house, bro. And it, like, really fucking traumatized me, bro, for a long time. Just fuck with me. But about that same time, I was, like, very religious at the time. Not anymore, but I was very religious. And my parents, I was going through confirmation at the church, if you mm -hmm. know about it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. not Catholic, but it was, like, Methodist mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. So. I was going through that, and it was right at the same time that happened to my friends, so they got me an Xbox, and they're like, basically, like, get your mind off everything, just play the Xbox. They don't know how to deal with me. It's yeah. like, I'm not talking to anybody, whatever. They're like, play the Xbox. And in the Xbox was a little two, three months for free. And I was like, or like yeah. for the Xbox Live, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, the little and slips. I was never yeah. allowed to play online before then, yeah. so it was just like too gory. People are going to figure out where I live, whatever else my mom get was Get your IP about. address. Like, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I went down to my dad because he was like staying the next day to check yeah. on me, and I was like, hey, dad, like, can I, can I use the free thing? And he was like, sure, man, do it. And then from there, bro, it started. I started playing Black Ops 2, started going crazy on there, and then started transferring to other things. Kept playing, kept playing. I became a foreign exchange student. When I was a foreign exchange student and I was super jet lagged, I ended up watching the BO3 videos that Skump would make of him like doing all the uh, gameplay and them doing the call outs. Like, the fact that he even uploaded that is crazy. When you think about like from a, like a competitive strategy thing of them actually uploading those gameplays from their perspective. Yeah. I don't know why they did that. You no, know what I mean? crazy. no, for real. But all I did was I wake up at like 3 a.m., bro. I'm super yep. jet lagged and I would just sit there and watch the videos and I watch the videos and watch the videos and just study, bro. I learned all the, I hadn't even played the maps, bro. I knew all the college. I hadn't even played the maps. Yeah. I can tell you the classes for every gun. I haven't even played the game yet. Yeah. So boom, I'm, I'm in Australia for six weeks. This is like week one. I'm learning all this shit. My grandpa had given me like $800 to go spend in Australia. My host family, they were great, bro. They were just so supportive. Pay for my meals. They pay for activities, everything. So I'm sitting here. I'm like 13, 14, it feels like. I guess I was probably like 15 at the time, 16 maybe. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I got a bunch of money. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna buy a scuff controller. I'm gonna buy a headset. I'm gonna buy the Xbox Live yeah, with yeah. the new game. Do I live? Get a monitor. Like all, you yeah. Know what I mean, and it shifted all to my house. So the second I got back home, bro, I could start playing. Yeah. And that's what I did. And then from there, started doing the videos. Started doing that. 
Went to the gaming events, snuck my camera in. Once Optic started flying me out, because I was the big fanboy, Optic started flying us out. I snuck a camera in. If I couldn't sneak it in, I had somebody else that I knew from the media crew sneak it in, like Reggie, Chris Bett. Like he's got yeah, Patrick. yeah, Whoever yeah. If yeah. I could get it in, you mm -hmm. know what I mean. So, do you? Crazy. So I've been, I've been following Optic for a long time, and as big as a fan, like as much as, because I'm, I'm heavy into gaming, and as much as I play and as much as I watch, you'll think I've been to a, an event before. Even if you're going by yourself, are they actually worth it? It depends how invested you are. If, if like if you're passionate about it, bro, so much fun. Yeah. So much fun, bro. Like yeah. they have little like if you go to play in the open bracket, like you'll be stressed. You already know you will be. You know, oh, absolutely. They can't talking crazy. You, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Bro, they they're slamming the table. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go home to your mom. Like, yeah, yeah, going yeah. crazy. Yeah, way yeah. worse than that, way worse than that for oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. You've seen the videos on yeah, Twitter. For yeah, sure. yeah, for sure. <laughs> for real. But, dude, they have a bunch of uh, like, different booths of, if you want to, like, talk with the Astro guys or, like, the Scuff guys or, you know I mean, different monitors that are coming out. Or sometimes they have just, like, an open area where you could be like, hey, I got three, four buddies, and there's three, four buddies on the other side, and we're just playing and just having fun. Like, it's the atmosphere. You know what I mean? You pay for the atmosphere. You pay for just, like, just – being there bro mm -hmm. like i said it's people are you're gonna have some people who are definitely like like i was bro the fanboy who are just gonna be like man i want your autograph i want a picture da, da, da. and then you have the people who are probably y'all where y'all are a lot more mature you could be way more normal but you can come here and be like all right this is dope yeah you know what I'm saying? the this age gap cool. in cod too especially with like optic because he said he's been watching for a while but like i don't know if you've been watching him since like 07 like early days when i was watching like d treats and jewel like all the snipers yeah Cause that's like what i was into when i was younger like you got that you got people our age and you got people that are like 14 15 so the age demographics all over the place Facts. at those events yeah. so um so you were able to sneak in your cameras and then was it from there that kind of started your passion into what you do now so i was sneaking in my camera i was doing like a little bit of photos here and there when i was like at my crib and just with my friends and stuff that was i mean it was just inconsistent i was just doing things for fun uh hitting people up to do it i didn't really know what i was doing i was just picking up the camera to just shoot and have fun you know what i mean the edits weren't really that good weren't professional like i said i was having fun so it didn't matter i was passionate it didn't matter i was just gonna follow it and see where it took me yeah. so through the gaming events like meeting people on twitter and shit like that building the brand online i met this guy named chris bet chris bet i love you chris bet you're watching this love you dog he is, he is the fucking goat, bro. He literally sat here in a Discord call with me and coached me how to edit my photos. Like, they were okay photos. Um, and he gave me a couple pointers here and there whenever I was at the event shooting. But then he told me how to edit every single one of them. Boom, 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 boom. Here's how you talk to clients. Here's how you post on social media. Here's how you do everything. And then the next event, he gave me more tips about here's how you shoot. Here's how you shoot. And then I kept getting better. Same thing with the Discord call. And, like, every time he came back, bro, I, I was like, hey, man, I got this. I did everything you said. I got this now. What like what next? You know what I mean? Just constantly pushing the envelope of what's next. Yeah, yeah. Like showing him I was hungry, I was ready. Because a lot of people who aren't, you know what I'm saying? But through that, bro, he took me under his wing, told me everything, bro. Got me like my first paid esports gigs. Like got me flown around, like leveled me up about so many different camera things, editing, like just. I mean, dude, he, he's he was like the older brother to me. Really. Yeah, yeah. There's points of times where like he's been yelling at me, bro. Told me things that like. When you hear it, you're like, damn, that's harsh. And it's like, I'm so fucking grateful he said it, man, because I needed to yep. hear it. And he was the one person who could really cut through to me. And things that just like, I mean, for example, one time he told me, uh, and it's something I, I deal with a lot, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Constantly just, I get so passionate in conversation. I'm an extrovert and I just want to constantly add, add, add. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, man, stop being the fucking last one to say something. And just listen. You know what I mean? I was like, damn. I was like yeah. 16, 17 at the time, right? I was like, damn. He's like, you're right, bro. Like, <laughs> like, I don't need to be saying stuff all the time. Like, I could just actually sit and listen and, like, learn way more from listening than I can from just talking all the time. Obviously, on a podcast like this, it's like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's whatever, right? yeah. But, you know what I mean? In, in conversation, I was just, I had nothing going for me. And I was like, everybody look at me, everybody look at me. And I was just, just fucking insecure, grabbing for attention. You know what I'm saying? But it took me getting to the other side of it to have somebody like, like Chris to kind of shake me to the other side to really recognize and understand, like, yo, there's a lot of growth that needs to happen to get to that point where I'm more mature. You know what I mean? How how much older is he than you? I was thinking about this the other day. I was on, I was on the phone with Reggie. I think he's 26. He may be 27. No, not that so not much yeah, older. Not much three, older. Three, yeah. three or yeah. four years older. At the time, bro. Because I, like even yeah, at 18, true. 19, bro, I'm a little kid, bro. Yeah. yeah. I'm a little kid, bro. I still live with my parents, bro. Like don't got a job. All these things. So yeah. it's like 
Like, yeah, I was doing a little camera work here and there, but I was a kid. I was a fucking kid. So he saw that, saw the potential in me, and just like, like flicked all the bullshit out of me. He's like, yeah. nope, get that out of there. He's <laughs> yeah. like, you don't talk, bro. That's good. Um, that it's dope right. that you made all the connections, though. Um, yeah. Because off camera, we're talking about like everybody that you know. Um, did any of them kind of like help start you to where you're at now? Because, I mean, you start off with gaming, and now you just you do music videos. So like how how was the transition from like did, was it gaming something else music videos or just gaming or like I like music let me do music videos. So I started with photography because the camera that I had was my mom's camera. It was an older camera. I couldn't really do video that well, so what, I just started what was with it? photo. Canon like 50D, 60D, something like that. Now you could do video, but like not that good. Oh. You know what I mean? Sorry to cut you off, but a no, question yeah. I was thinking of as well: How did you learn how to shoot low light? For your like yeah. during your events, like yeah. it's, it's, it's dark the hardest to shoot in, and it's dark in there, which I'm assuming except for the yeah. stage. But how did you learn to look, shoot low light like that? So, one thing is like your your gear will carry you some degree. So like the yeah. lens that I have on that guy yeah. it has an open aperture. It's a it's a prime lens, like a two yeah. eight, and like I can, yeah, two, eight. I can zoom to twenty four to seventy, which is nice. Yeah, but the two eight is like any any atmosphere, any day, I can have it at two eight. Some of the guys where it's like, okay, I gotta zoom a little bit. Yeah. It's, it'll go from like a three five to a five six. And you're like, well, I don't want that. I don't wanna be a five six. Yeah. I wanna yeah. be a three four or two eight or one yeah, five. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. if you if you wanna kick it back, having having that prime lens, even if you have like a, a 35, 1, 8, something like that, that wide open aperture is really is really big for just like being able to actually get a lot of light in in a little low light environments. Shooting twenty four frames per second, also big just because I mean, the other things you can shoot at are what, 30 frames, 60 frames, 120 frames. 30, 60, 120 are all gonna be a higher shutter speed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you're at 24, you're at a lower shutter speed, you got just a little more to play with. And it's gonna look more cinematic anyway, so. Yeah. Did you, the lens that your mom had was a good enough lens to, I guess, help you somewhat through it? Photo, yeah, <clears throat> not video. What which kind? is why, like, I, I made the transition to Sony. From Canon. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because I, I know, well, I know Sony was better for low, for light, low light, and then that's why I asked, like, how did you like learn just low light on the on the fly? Like, well, I guess was it on the fly? Kind of, bro. So, I was doing when I had the 50D. I was just doing like portraits, just like portraits mm -hmm. for my homies, like portraits for my friends, like some landscape stuff here and there. But like, it's mainly just like just like pictures of my friends. You know, what I'm saying pictures of whatever I could, but mainly my friends. Um, I got, I think I just got like a, a bunch of money, like my birthday's kind of near Christmas, so I had a bunch of money just saved up, mm -hmm. and then like right at Christmas time, I got a Sony, and it was the Sony A6300. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had yeah, that yeah. lens, I had that 24 to 70, while I had the A6300. I didn't start with that lens, but like gotcha. I got it while Yeah, I yeah, why you upgrading you know your, what I mean? yeah. Exactly. So yeah. from there, I had the kit lens, and then I had a 3518, which it was on a crop sensor, so it kind of looked like a 50. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then I moved to the 24 to 70. I shot Juice World and Ski Mask on the 24 to 70. The day that I got my A7 III, I shot Jack Harlow, and then I still did A7 III, but cool. Time, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, well, I guess back to my my original question. Yeah. What from, so was it from eSports, you just were like, I like music, I want to do music videos, or is there something in between that that shot you to music videos? Always, always been a big fan of music, big fan of hip-hop. Yeah. It's like, it, it's what inspires me. I listen to music every single day. It fucking fuels me up. It's it's crazy. It's always been a part of my life. I can't imagine my life without it. Mm -hmm. So, me thinking that, like, okay, I got the camera. How can I be involved with the music scene? Mm -hmm. Well, I got my homie Don. Yeah, he's making music. I can just do his music videos. I can okay. do music videos, do his photos. Boom, boom, boom. So I started doing that. I don't think we even shot a video for. It had to have been like nine, twelve months, like a year almost. You know what I mean? Before we actually shot a video, because at the time. <laughs> we talked about it, but at the time, like, there was a, like, I wanted to have a gimbal, and I didn't have a gimbal, so mm -hmm. it wasn't until, like, I was able to borrow my homies and we shot a video. In the meantime, I was doing a lot of handheld stuff, just, like, little cinematic short videos and kind of just practicing more and more um, on other people, and then once I got good enough with, with, like, using the gimbal, having the gear, I was like, yo, Don, like, I'm ready, like, let's, let's, let's lock in. So then we started going ham there. I was with Don. I told you I was living in Corpus Christi. So I was living in Corpus Christi. Mm -hmm. I kind of taken a break and I was figuring out like, yo, do I want to do it? Do I want to not? At the end of my time at Corpus, like I, I left there in May. In June, I shot for Juice World, And so I had okay. like my homies uh, who I met through Twitter while yeah. I was doing the esports yeah. stuff. Um, they were just photographers and they were like, yo, we're coming down to Austin. We're with uh, Juice World's production team for the, the concert. If you want to come, we got you on a photo pass. What year was this? 2019. 
And I was like, fuck yeah, 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 dude, yeah. I'm in there. Yeah. Damn. So it was, yeah. it was six months before he died, bro. He was a super influential artist for me. So being able to see him, I mean, I, like one of the, I'll show you at the end, bro. But one of the photos I took is like, I'm in the photo pit right in front of him, bro. And he's just looking right at me, bro. And like, I don't know, bro. I'll remember it forever, you know? And it was such a special time. But I met them because of Twitter, bro. And just stayed in touch. They hit me up. They were coming. I said, yo, I got a photo pass. And I was like, yeah. yeah. And that was, that was in June. So moved back to Austin after that. And I was like, just trying to figure it out. I was taking a gap year. I was working, doing, uh, I was doing yearbook photos. Just like making a bag, just whatever I could do. Yeah, yeah. Saved up money doing that. I bought the A7 III, which is when I did photos for Jack Carla that day. I bought it off my homie used. It's like two grand. Boom, boom, boom. Kept doing photos, kept doing that. And like now that A7 III is like 1,500 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, yeah. It's like, it's crazy to see how, that, how and uh, camera gear elevates. You and know? people like always, they don't really know how much camera gear is until like they start looking and trying to get into it. Granted, if you're talented, you can make your money back fast to pay yourself. Absolutely. But a kind of question that came up for me, one of our main videographer, Albert, he does a lot of concert photography. So asking you, since you've done it, is there something different about concert photography that makes people really like enjoy it? Or is it just something to just do and kind of put on your resume or portfolio? So the reason I love it is because yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm experiencing the whole concert through this, like this special lens. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you have like good equipment, it's, yeah. it's real fun because you get to play around more, you know? Yeah. And so when you're, when you're at a concert, like, I mean, there's, there's two people at a concert. There's a person on stage and there's a person in the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Unless if you're the photographer on the side and you get this, you get like some, some special responsibilities. You get some special privileges. So yeah. I can get to go backstage with the artist. Maybe I can walk up on stage. Maybe I'm able to just kind of squeeze in through people a little bit. Boom. And I'm out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And have the, the privilege to move around and it's more accepted to move around. Man, it, it was just, it was fun. You get a different perspective. It's really just the best way to put it. Do you, so out for Albert and another guy, it's not concert, but he, he uh, does the camera for uh, Longhorn football, oh, nice. MLS, stuff like that. He works for CBS. Mm. Um, he says he, Albert and him, they both say they like doing it. It's because of the energy they get out of the game. Absolutely. Yeah. Is that kind of for you too yeah. as well? Yeah, like I said, how passionate I am about the music, bro, yeah. it feeds into what I'm doing. I have a video where I was uh, doing photos for Jack Carlo and I'm on the side, boom, boom, boom. And then I'm just like dancing, singing along. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Back in there, like. You feel that fire running you, and then you're like, yo, I need to go do this real quick. Boom, boom, boom. And then you get it, and you're like, yes. Yeah. Like you said the energy, and then it carries into the next thing. So then you're like, oh, I need to move quickly to get to this side of the stage because I know that this thing's going to come up, and that's going to be a good shot. So then you're fucking, you're thinking, oh, let me come up with the best route to get around all these people. Boom, 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 boom. And you're all strategic with it. I know you know what I'm talking about, Jory. <laughs> Real talk, so. <laughs> um, have you done any music videos, or just straight for, I guess, for Ski Mask and Juice and, and Jack? Is it all photos, or has it done yeah, any music so videos? so I started with concert photos, and then I moved into music videos more. Definitely for people out there, whoever's trying to get into doing photo video work, there's way more money in video. Yeah. And bro, I love photo. I really do. Like, there's money out there still. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be the one to tell people, yo, you can't do that. But yeah. what I realized was it was way easier for me to make money doing video. So I'll just yeah. double down on that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But it was a great learning tool of doing the photo. I got the mentor. Yeah, yeah. I learned how to color grade. I learned composition. You know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Now I pivoted. And then I started doing videos with Don, doing videos with Don. And this is what I was getting to earlier. So, when I was in, uh, I took that break and I was living mm -hmm. in Austin. I was doing the yearbook photos every single day, bro. Don was working at Top Golf. He was a server at Top Golf, and he was. Uh, What's his name? Donovan. Donovan. You might know. Donovan. Wait. Don Hawk. Yes. Yeah. Bro. That's crazy. Bro. Yeah, Don Hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, bro. That is my boy, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that's my yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, so. I know. I I used to work there. Yeah, that's um, crazy. Yeah, I, I worked there for a while. Don, Don was my boy, and uh, I would go to his house every single day. I was working the yearbook photos. He was top golf every single day, bro. It didn't matter what was going on. I was at his house. We would, I mean, we just go there, sit. We called it the nest because he's Don Hawk, obviously. Mm -hmm. We were in the garage, bro. We just like roll up, just plot, you know what I'm saying? Plot whatever it was, planning music videos, taking photos, freestyling. I'm coaching him like, yo, I think you could do this better. He's mm -hmm. like asking me like, I got this song written. What do you think? Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah. Which that was like the basis I didn't understand at the time. That was the basis of me yeah. becoming a music manager. Yeah. Just kind of understanding the, the backside of things and how the creative process works and how the business side gotcha. works. And gotcha. Trying to be able to combine the two. But every single day I was at his house, I was at his house plotting and he goes, hey man, there's this event that's coming up. It's, it's just down the street, downtown. It's called the Smoke Out. We're going to have a whole bunch of artists who come and we can go network, meet a bunch of people. I was like, fuck yeah, let's do it. Yeah. 
I guess actually at first I, there was a little pushback for me because I was mm. at the time I wasn't as outgoing and Don definitely brought that out of me. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Hey, like, he's a very Don, outgoing yeah, guy. Exactly. He's good Let's energy, go. good go. people to have around. Man, yeah. I, I can't imagine doing it without him so early on because I felt like I was incomplete without him next to me. I was like, I, I like the way you talk to people. I want to hear how you communicate and I'll play off you. Like, I was so insecure doing it myself at the time. Real talk. But we went there, went to the smoke out. Every single, I mean it, bro. Every single artist who was on stage, boop, 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 photos, and they get off stage. Yo, love the set, bro. Great shit. You know what I'm saying? Compliment, compliment. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I do photos. I got these while you're on stage. Hey, give me on Instagram. I'll give you the photos. All of my ask for is a tag. Boom, boom, boom. I'm real quick in and out. Like, I'm not trying to waste their time. They just got off stage, bro. They're going to say hi to all their homies yeah. and family. Yeah. I just want to, I want to lock in. I'm brand yeah. new. I don't know fucking anybody in the Austin music scene. I know Don, yeah. who's the little white boy who already is getting shade from everybody because he's white in the rap yeah. Movie. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm white too. And I'm also a little white boy. So it's like, <laughs> bro, two little white boys. One's yeah. dressed up trying to be a rapper. Is a rapper, but people yeah. don't respect it. Yeah, and yeah. The other one's camera boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not cameraman, camera boy. Like that's how I just call myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was, it was there, bro. It was there where I just met everybody. I met Jay Mill there, bro. I met like so many fucking people. I actually, got my base of like while I was there. I mean, I do the photos, but then once I started talking to people, it's like, oh yeah, bro, I shot for Juice World or. Yeah, at that point it was just Juice World and Ski Mask. Hey man, I shot for Juice World. I shot for Ski Mask. Yeah. I guess maybe Jack Carlo too. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I do music videos too. Boom, boom, boom. Got yeah. fucking, fucking everybody, bro. And that right there, doing all the free work was the basis for everything, bro. And I didn't even understand how beneficial it was at the time, bro. Bro, people were doing the same thing, and this is no shade to anybody. People yeah. were doing the same thing that I was doing of like doing the photos. Yeah. But then like selling them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bro, getting their back, I respect it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm so glad I didn't yeah. charge people, bro. I'm so glad I did it for yeah. free, bro. People respected me. People cared about what yeah. I was going to say. The people who I gave free photos to, I then was like, hey man, I'm throwing this concert. Mm -hmm. You want to come perform on it? They're like, fuck yeah, bro. Who would have known if that would happen? Yeah. If I was like, hey man, I'll, yeah. I'll give you these photos for $50, $30, $20, 10 whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and that's the thing too. Like, you have to open that door for yourself by doing that. Like, barter, talk to people, be like, oh, I'm going to do this for you, whatever. Because that's like a networking tool. You have to be able to do that to grow your relationship and connections. Yeah. Because our videographer, we try to, because he, sorry, um, at the be at, at, at early on in his, photography career he was like that trying to charge for everything and i get it because it's an expensive hobby but there there's just times where you just you got to put the product aside and like hey i'll do this for you because you don't know who they know and it goes such Not for a long real way. though they go such a long way it's so hard bro and it's so hard because he's so right about charging because like man i know my worth i'm not gonna let people stomp over me but like the, the hardest part is like recognizing that both sides of getting paid and doing free work especially early on are equally as important, but no one tells you where the line is. No one tells you, no one gives you a blueprint of like, yo, do this for free and charge for that. Or this person's worth giving a discount for it. You know what I mean? You don't have anybody. Yeah. Who did I have, bro? I had Chris Bett on the phone. You know what I'm saying? Who, I, who was telling me all the things about photos. Didn't really know a ton about video, but I would text him and be like, yo, like I got this thing, what do I charge? Da -da -da. I don't know what to do. I would talk to Don, but Don didn't know. He's a fucking, he's a rapper, bro. He's working yeah. at Top all the time. He doesn't know how to price his videos. He's just like, yeah, man, like, that's good. And obviously, I'm thinking, man, I deserve more. I should charge more. Like, my work's getting there. Like, yeah. this isn't worth what it was anymore. But then, when you ask people who are outside of it, they're not going to understand. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, oh, well, like, well, that's reasonable. 250 for a video is reasonable. Yeah. And you're like, man, 250 I'm fucking starving myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the hardest part is no one tells you where that line is. Bro, I still do shit for free. Yeah. I still do shit for free. Yeah. We 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 ask Albert like, what would you charge or what's a good price? And I, there really isn't a good answer. There, there's not a right answer. You, I mean, it, it's you know hard I mean? because the the we don't do as much as you, but we still know what goes into it, and it's the amount of not only the time that you spend going out there, but you were on you're taking photos for uh, juice, you in that whole thing you probably took let's just say six thousand photos you know how long it takes to go through six thousand photos and then you find five that you like and then you take the time to edit those like yeah that's a lot of time that's you still got to account for when you're charging into the price yeah. and people don't realize that so they just think you point shoot and like oh here's the photo and it's like nah <laughs> there's still some work that got to be done yeah, on the back end additional. and that's, that's where the hard part of charging comes in because they're like, oh, 300 bucks for a 30 second video? That's a lot of money. But it's like, 
yeah, but I got 30 minutes of footage that I got to look through to put this yeah. video together that is going to take me another three hours to put into Premiere, Final Cut, nice. and edit, and color grade, and do all this other stuff. People don't people aren't going to know until they know. So it's like one of those things. We all have a baseline of a general understanding. It's like we know what it takes. So, but you also like you said, you still got to know when you got to do stuff for free for certain opportunities and things like that. Um, you were talking about doing music videos and things like that. Our homie Albert has done like one or two, but I've always been curious, like how long in general does it take to do a music video? Cause you got to obviously plan it out the sets where you're going to go, things like that, different shots, editing, all that stuff. So just, just tell us kind of about that process of making music videos. So it depends. Yeah. And I know that's not the answer you want to hear, no. right? No, no, um, good. but it's, it really depends. So, you have some people who, and like like I said, no shade to anybody, people are doing things at different levels. You have some mm -hmm. people who are like, man, I just want a shot in the gas station, I want a shot in the parking garage, and I want a shot in the studio. Bro, piece of cake, boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna shoot the song to the video, boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna throw it in Premiere, I'm gonna line up the audio, and then I just cut on the beat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And find parts that I think look hard. The parts where I'm like, yo, that's tough and gets me lit in my chair. I'm like, yo, I'm included. You know <laughs> yeah, for I mean? sure. Yeah. I'm involved in it. Too, yeah, absolutely. Know? But then you have other people where like, like they're down to invest, right? And this is more where I'm moving. You know what I'm saying? The people mm -hmm. who are okay, like I'm not going to question like $1,000 being a minimum. $2,000, 4000 5000 being a minimum. Because when you want to do a production, like I was thinking about it earlier, is when you're starting as a freelancer, you don't understand you're still trading time for money. Yep. You know, like you think, yeah, like I'm not working for anybody else. Like it's cool, but like, bro, you still are. So yeah, like if I may be getting paid $300 for a 30 second video. Okay. Yeah. It's only 30 seconds of editing, but yeah. Okay. I'm going to go through 30 minutes of footage. Then I'm going to find what I like. Then I'm going to go through, then I'm going to chop it. Like you said, then I'm going to color grade it. Then I'm going to do audio engineering. Then I'm going to export it. I'm, everything else. Boom, boom, boom. Like send it. It's like, okay. What was, $300 for a day of shooting and a day of editing turned into me getting paid minimum wage. Nah, yep. for real. You know what I mean? Yeah. And bro, that's where I was at, but you do it because you love it yep. and you know where it's going to lead. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you're not worried about the money and a lot of people can't see that far. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the process of music video depends on the creative process. For me, when I, when people hit me for a music video, dude, this is why I feel like I'm a creative genius. I know I'm a creative genius. Uh, absolutely. When, you got when, to. I, when people send me a song, dude, like, you know when Kanye is like, bro, I hear a song and I just, I see it. You know what I'm saying? I just see a painting. Yeah. Bro, I literally see the, the whole video. Yeah. It's so clear in my mind. And as, as soon as I see it, it's cool when people like don't tell me ideas, specifically people that I'm working with and I have full control. I can be like, bro, this is so clear to me. This is how it's going to go. And they're like, all right, bet. I'm on board. That's really what I love and I thrive with. When you have people who, and like, I still love being able to do work with a camera, but mm. when you don't have the same creative control, it's like, I'm... I'm Making other people's ideas come to life, bro. It's still beautiful. You know what I'm saying? It's still beautiful. It's still a blessing. I'm very grateful for it. But what I really love is doing like making my ideas become manifestations. You know what I mean? Because why I'm a fucking egotistical asshole, I guess. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> no, 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 you, gotta have, you definitely dope. have to have an ego. Yeah, this, so, it, it's also dope because it's like, I feel like it's also better when they let you take control and let you do what yeah, you want to do because yeah. that brings out more of the freedom in you, more of the freedom in the song. And there's just stuff that you see that they're not going to see because at the end of the day, it's your craft, not their craft. Their craft is making the music. Your craft is getting all the good angles. So, um, do you still work with Don or no? Absolutely, bro. I was at his house do you know, yesterday. do you know, um, the other people that make music that he was working with at Top Golf too? Yeah. Like Mike D. Uh, do you know David? Kuna Kuna oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we had him on too. He's up there somewhere. But nice. anyways, um, yeah. do you ever watch any of his music videos? Yeah. So that nothing was the same video, or the or not nothing was the same. I can't remember. N NTS it's never the same. One. Never same. Never the same. Yeah, um, never it released same. on uh, not this pa not this album, the one before it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that video uh, was dope, and that that's where the freedom comes in of you going to like six different locations, doing your thing, and and. Um, well, I didn't shoot the. No, no, not you, oh, but okay, in general, okay, yeah, 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 that yeah. for that absolutely, videographer, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I hope you get to shoot one of his videos, but he goes to Cali a lot to shoot his videos. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the boy. Which it's probably a little bit of better scenery where he's from, but it's beautiful out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't blame him. Yeah, um, but no, um, I hope you get to shoot his video because 
I like him a lot, and yeah, I think he'll do some dope, yeah, dope the boy. work together. No, he's got a dope sound. Don't yeah. put me on him, actually. Yeah? Yeah. Because yeah. 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 uh, that, that's, that's, man, that's a small world. It's crazy. Man. He's the one that helped us with all our equipment. Yeah. David, uh, David, yeah. David, David helped us. Uh, yeah. He got. He told us what the mixer to get, the microphones, how to work everything. Yeah, he helped yeah. us a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. shout yeah. out David. Crazy. We, his uh his podcast was a long time coming, but we finally got it done. It was, it was a dope one. It was, it was cool. So, um, he, he's definitely one of my my favorite artists in the local scene. Would you, uh, yeah. Would you ever shoot on an iPhone like Cole Bennett? Like you know how he's he made those seven videos this yeah. year shooting on an iPhone. Have you tried it, or would you ever do it? You know, it's funny because Don and I talked about it a long time ago. Of like. Bro, let's do the shot on iPhone thing. It'll be lit. Yeah. And we never did. And then Cole Bennett did it. And now it's like, I don't want to steal this. So yeah, I, yeah. That's what, he did yeah. it so well. What I do respect from him is he, uh, like, he made a community post on his YouTube thing. And yeah. He's like, Yo, Apple reached out. Yeah, yeah. They tried to do it. He said no. Yeah, they tried. They tried to pay him or whatever, or like make it like an exclusive series. He did, and he just stopped it. It's crazy. That's what. That's what I like about him. He's very. He's a very genuine dude. And then if he he wants to do stuff because he wants to do it, not to get a bag out of it. I mean, obviously he still gets a bag out of it because of his stuff, but um, he does it. Yeah, he does it because that's what he wants to do, and that and that's dope. And then also the pool he has because I didn't know, but he shot the Minions video. And then mm-hmm. he said he only do it if if they could use his homie's uh, so- Yeet song. Yeet, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If they could use his song as, as a video, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. Pits people on. That's what's about. Exactly that. Yeah, bro. exactly that. That's what it's about. Yeah, yeah but, I mean, because if you have a Juice World ski mask, if you have a if you have a, a Cole Bennett video. You're gonna get put on, baby. Yeah, that's all you need. You're good. Yeah, you're good. That's all you need. You're good. You're you're good at that point. Yeah. Um, do you draw inspiration for people like those or no? Bro, I think the director that I really feel the most inspiration from is Edgar Estevez. Okay. And he's one who's like not as popular, and like when when I bring up director names, dude, he has shot some crazy videos. Him, uh, he has a production company, Blank Square Productions, has a bunch of other people under him now. But, bro, just super cinematic, very well shot, well planned. The treatments are all super thorough. That's what I envision. It's just very thorough treatments where the ideas very specifically coming to life. Like I want the light coming here. This person's here. Everyone else is here. Like just how intentionally he is with things. He's very much uh, like educating younger directors yeah, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. I fuck with that. And uh, like I said, just the, the style, the cinematic style, very yeah. high contrast, cinematic, dark, like that, that's me. I love yeah. it, bro. That's why I got the black tee, the Lavelle T. So yeah. What are some of the uh, yeah. things he shot? Um, he shot a lot of Russ's videos. A lot of Russ's videos. Yeah, a lot of Russ's videos. Um, he shot the box by Roddy Rich. That was okay. definitely a bigger one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely have seen that. On the fly now, I'm like not gonna be able to name. Yeah, it no, no, because I'm just nah. trying to see like yeah, I'm just trying remember to, like, what I've seen. Yeah. Um, because uh, they they always play music out here and put on a lot of music videos, so we've seen a lot of music yeah. videos. But I'm trying to just remember what I've seen. Sure. Uh, just to get get a concept of what he does. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I, like I said, the box is probably like yeah, one of the biggest the ones. Yeah, but one of the biggest ones. He's he's somebody who like like Cole Bennett is way more, uh, has way more notoriety around his name. You mm-hmm. know, say Agresta is not as much, and even like Blank Square Productions, I say that and y'all like, no clue, right? Mm-hmm. It's like it's very niche because I, I'm a fucking music video director, yeah. so I dug in the niche, you know. But uh, but yeah, he's he's fucking super lit, bro. Love his videos, love his energy, bro. The the way he puts himself out online, just the message he puts out and. He came here uh, as an immigrant, came here, like, fucking no money, worked his way up, and just talks about the story, talks about the grind, and, like, lives what he's speaking, you know, and did a whole bunch of free shit for Russ because he saw the vision. Um, Losing Control, that video, it has, like, a quarter of a million views on YouTube, I think. Did that video for free, and it's not even that crazy of a video, but same way with me and Don, it's like, man, I just see the vision. I see the vision you're going with your music. I see the vision where I'm going with the videos. Let's bring them together, and let's just fucking do it. And that's exactly what he did with Russ, so... That's kind of where I see myself through him in there. Yeah, okay. cool. Uh, well, speaking of uh, production companies, you got your own Lavelle. Um, tell us a little about that. How'd that get started? How'd that get going? So Lavelle started in 2018. I was in Corpus Christi. I was going to college at the time. I was sitting in a history lecture, and I was like, this shit blows. I got to get <laughs> the fuck out of here yeah. however I can. I yeah, feel you on so that. I started, I started just drawing, just doodling. A bunch of different shit in my notepad, whatever came to me. I'm not even much of a like a drawer. Yeah. Like, I was like, just feeling it. As a history, it didn't matter. I just started drawing, drawing, drawing. And then I was thinking, like, okay, I want to come up with like like a logo for a brand. And I was thinking, okay, like what could I do? What could I do? And I was like, man, like I love music. Like I love video. I like fashion too. 
like, what am I going to do? Make fucking Lyrical Lemonade 2.0? I was like, I got to come with something. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, better yeah, than it, right? yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay, well, I want to do all these things, but I care about them all like, evenly. I care about them all so much. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to level out my efforts and my passions and have myself extended evenly and not pushed over into one, one too many things. So it started with the word level, but I was like, that's fucking lame and taken everywhere. So I was like, let me just add a little swag to it. I threw in the extra V because change pronunciation, Lavelle. It's like, yeah. it has a little twang to it. Yeah. It felt a little special. Um, but I love the mirror image of the logo. It just, it felt like something I resonated with. Like I said, dude, I don't know where the fuck it came from, but I literally was just doodling and it just like kind of came out on the notepad and I was like, we're doing it. And I had a rendition of the logo. I showing all my homies, like I had it on Snapchat and I was like, yo, what do you think of this? What should I do different? And then eventually just changed to the new logo, got it made on Fiverr. Boom, boom, hey, shout Fiverr. Like, shout <laughs> Fiverr for real. Yeah. Yeah. Fiverr. Fiverr. All our logos, made all bro. of our stuff. All our shit. Shout yeah. out Fiverr. Yeah. 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 I mean, dude, like the amount of people who don't know about Fiverr or don't use it, and it's like, I've gotten so much shit made that just helped very quickly. Yeah, and it's yeah. so cheap, too. Like, to be honest, like to get a logo made for 50 to 100 bucks and it look like that, it's like, take that yeah. any day of the week. Yeah. As soon as you can, it's so worth it getting the person who's a consistent graphic designer. Cause like that's what we had whenever we were doing stuff for the Hall of Fame. We had this guy where like every flyer, everything else was like, yo, let me just throw it to him. You know what I'm saying? Just to take care of it. He did a good job every time. You know what I mean? You paid him. Like it was lit. But we weren't gonna get that from Fiverr for the price and the consistency. Yeah, the yeah, price, yeah. You know? so for sure. Being able to build that relationship outside is worth it. But when you can, you yeah. Know? yeah. When you're yeah. starting, bro. Fiverr that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fiverr's <laughs> nice. It, it just it's dope too because they have so so many different categories on there with so many different things or whatever you want because he has another logo that's what is it called which one the one you and steve oh keep it a buck or yeah what? but what's that type of logo oh called? it's like a cartoon logo like it's like yeah. us sitting down in a chair and it's like his podcast but it's just like a cartoon type of style nice. it was a little more it was like 150 but we sent in our scans of our faces that's and it. then they, like, it looks crazy bro look no, just it, like, i'll show you later but it looks yeah, it's just, crazy it looks just like us it's yeah. crazy it's a little bit expensive but it, it, it's definitely yeah. worth it. it it looks a lot more professional too yeah yeah um Absolutely. don knows how to draw right Don? Yeah, they, I, mean, I remember him. I, I pretty much sure I remember him like doing some sketches or whatnot. Maybe it was just bullshit. I don't but. want him to watch this and be like, I can't draw you. <laughs> 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 but like that, yeah. I know him. He's not like an avid drawer, you know. Because yeah. I didn't know if he helped you like revamp the logo, what it was. No, it was really just I had a. I guess the rendition was like, kind of. I'll draw on the table so you can see, but it was like kind of just more of like a like a. a like a tooth almost. Like imagine like a saber tooth. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Just yeah, yeah, like yeah. Focus there, but it just didn't it didn't feel like it was cohesive with the other letters, so I was like, you need to just change it. Yeah. So Well so where where y'all at now? Do y'all pretty much do everything? Is it just music videos or photography or commercials? Where 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 y'all at now? With Lavelle? Yeah. yeah. So Lavelle is definitely focused around hip hop specifically. Mm -hmm. Um I think I have other companies outside of it that are doing things, but that specifically I wanted to focus on Hip hop. I wanted to focus on the hip hop story. I've always loved the funk flex freestyles, yeah. swaying hot ninety seven. You know what I mean? Hot yeah. ninety seven, bro. I loved all those. I loved yeah. the noisy, uh, yeah, the little rap radars. Bro. I yep. loved all that. So it's like, okay, okay let me take okay. all that from people who just they need a platform. You know what I'm saying? And if yeah. I know how to do the camera shit, I know Got how to edit, I know how to build the online brand. Like, I feel like I'm literally doing a disservice to the world if I don't do it. Like, you, you hear people say, "Get out of your own way, bro." I have to get out of my own way with that shit because, bro, storytelling, I, I'll talk about this with Reggie earlier on the phone. The gift that I have, literally, that I feel like my purpose is, is cinematic storytelling. Yeah. That's why I do music videos. That's why I do documentaries, shit like that. So it's like, okay, through the performances, through the Hall of Fame, like that in itself is cinematic storytelling. These performances, these artists are having, it's obviously cinematic, cool lights, everything there. That's dope. I want to make documentaries and shit too. The noisy stuff. I want to have the podcast where people can come and rap on it. Like, yeah. I want all that. But yeah. It doesn't exist. Why? Yeah. Why doesn't it exist? I'm going to make it. Yeah. I made it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a lot, of, a lot of times people, you know, get stuck in a box, right? Like, we were opinionated podcasts before. Now we're opinionated media because of that same example. Like, we don't want to be just doing one thing, two, three, four, five things, you know, want to do whatever we want to do. And kind of exactly. giving that lane, like, you gave a, a a bunch of examples, but nobody has all of it. And, you know, you already have the connections. I mean, Austin, especially we talk about all the time. I feel like Austin's one of those places where at our age, like if you're doing this type of stuff, you better like lock in for real. Cause everyone's coming here. The opportunity is crazy, That's bro. It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. I'm so glad you say that. Bro. Yeah. Cause there's so many people who are like, man, I hate people moving here. Like, 
stop California my Texas, other shit. Like, bro, don't get me wrong. I like Texas. I'm, but it's opportunity that comes. Yeah, it is true. I'm on both of it. Like, yeah. I like it, but I hate it. Cause, I mean, we, we I hate it because of the cost of living. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm not much older than you, a little bit older than you, mm-hmm. but like we're still around the same age. Like from what we grew up with to like to see it now, it's very different. It, like that, bro. And very like different. traffic, I, I hate traffic. It sucks, and it's it, 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 for us to be able to get on 35 and go downtown it was so quick. Now it's like, all right, we yeah, it's unless you traffic. It scares me, bro. Yeah. bro I don't take it. And Mopac, as as I can. yeah, Mopac's, Mopac's a little better, a little better. Yeah, yeah Mopex is a little bit better, but it's like we only have those two major, major roads, and like that's where everybody's on. And yeah. That's that's that, that, we're such a big city, but yet still small. Yeah, and that's 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 what I don't like about it. We're smaller than San Antonio. Yeah, which yeah. doesn't feel real. Yeah, no, we are because yeah. we're the fastest growing we're city for city. like the past three or four years. Yeah, and then but we're also the fourth smallest city. I mean, the fourth largest city in Texas. Yeah. Like yeah. Four, yeah, fourth, fourth largest. Yeah. yeah, it's like Dallas, Houston, El Paso, San Antonio, yeah. and then us. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, so you started your production company, and then you're, you're just already like Lavelle when you shot for Juice and all them? No, so that's something completely separate. All that stuff was just under me. Under you? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And, and so, like, I met Don, and he was something who, like, I came up with the idea, and it was like, yo, we're kind of just like, like I was in the nest every single day talking with him, chopping it, plotting. And it was like, that kind of was him plotting on that too, with mm-hmm. me. Okay. So then it was like, okay, we're, dude, we went through so many fucking different friends, bro. So many friends <laughs> came in and out where we're like, we're trying to find the last one who fits. We're trying to find the last puzzle piece, bro. Fucking nobody fit, nobody fit, nobody fit. Eventually, I'm doing the free photos, I ran into Dawson. I ran into Dawson. He wasn't even Dawson Wayne at the time. He was a little suave. And I did photos for him. We connected. Eventually, he hit up Don, saw that he posted some music he released, and was like, yo, I dropped some music too, check it out. He was under a different alias, Dawson Wayne now. Don was like, yo, this music's crazy. Like, started blowing him up. We met, like, us three, just connected. We were talking about the goals that we had with Lavelle, what we wanted to do. Dawson was like, man, I've been trying to throw shows because I got ripped off with this other show. Um, like, mm-hmm. he paid for an opening slot, and it was just kind of like bullshit. The promoter kind of just put him in a bad spot. Like, people weren't paying attention to him, all this shit. So he was like, man... I want to throw my own shows. Bro, the fucking stars aligned. So now, us three came together. Boom. Lavelle actually started getting rolling and started getting the shows going. We were Lincoln at my house. This is when I was in, in college. We are Lincoln every single day. But they'd come over whenever the Dom was off work or wherever. Like, sometimes it would only be one of them. Like, only Dawson would come. Or then only Dom would come. Or sometimes they'd both be there. Mm-hmm. But it was like, dude, every fucking day we were doing something. Started meeting with the fire marshals. We thought about throwing like this massive concert for the first one. We were like, man, we're just gonna fucking do it. So yeah. We had a, a fire escape plan with the fire marshals. We had, like talked to okay. city officials for like getting porta potties and like, uh, because you have to have a certain amount of those. And, okay. Like, Off duty EMT and police, all these things. We went down the whole rabbit hole. Yeah. And then we're like, yo, actually, we're not gonna do this anymore. <laughs> we're gonna do this other thing. And we just went with Empire Control Room. But every single day, bro, that was us just figuring shit out. And dude, that was a big start of like me transitioning into like. Like a man, real talk. Because yeah. beforehand, dude, I was just a boy, and I was having to fucking talk to these city officials. Like, bro, I had to, I had to man up real quick. So since those were under, I guess you are, you, are you still? Well, do you still advertise that for like? Uh, I've worked with this, this, and this. Or do you leave that out of it since it wasn't part of Lavelle? Um, with Lavelle, no, I don't. No. Um, bro, honestly, that first event was like real good for us. It just, it did well, bro. We got a lot of good content from it. Definitely, just like. Like at the time, I was still only doing music videos. Mm-hmm. So that was the first time where I kind of put myself out into the world as, like, I'm a music businessman now. Yeah, 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 You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So now, like, people start respecting me a little differently as, like, yeah. okay, like he knows how to do the video stuff, but he also do something else, which, like, I saw myself as doing that, but I just had to prove it to other people, yeah. you know? So. That's dope. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, no. Well, it was more of, like, um, like the Juice, the Ski Mask, and Jack Harlow. Were you able to put that under Lavelle to, like, help it? Start started or is that just something you kind of leave because that's what you did by yourself, not yeah. under Lavelle? Sure. So I think when I was uh, like talking to the artist when I was doing the free photos, that was definitely and like it's like a spiel that I gave everybody. Yeah, man, I'm a photographer. I work for Juice Jack. Yeah, I mean, you got to. You have to. You have to. Yeah. Like it's great that I have those, you know. But like once we did the Hall of Fame and it went real well, um, like I just that's just me. You know, what I'm saying I don't mm-hmm. feel the need to bring it in. 
That's dope. Personally, yeah. That's dope. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you had mentioned when I had asked you for like a, a brief background of like what you do and things like that, that you had shot for RDC World and shout out to the boy Peyton for, you know, setting this up for us. But uh, yeah, how, how did that uh, meeting them go? I guess that net, that whole event. And then um, how did you land that gig shooting that uh, Squid Game video or being in it? Yeah. Yeah. So. You remember how earlier I told you how important social media was? Mm -hmm. Bro, social media is so important. There's a real fucking negative side to it that we should not dis disregard at all. Yeah. We should be very aware of the negative side and how it's fucking with all of our mental health and how we're all addicted to it. But the other side of it is real fucking nice and shiny, man. It's real nice and shiny. It's this, it's this idea of, hey, man, you can, you can be doing what you're doing right now and talk to anybody in the whole fucking world and they can start rocking with you. And you can start making full-time money just because of this this little thing we call the internet. Yep. It's a fucking golden goose right there, bro. I wanted it so bad. So through me just meeting people on, on Twitter, bro, I, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, I went to high school with. And I was like, hey, man, I'm thinking about going to St. Edwards to go to school. Mm -hmm. I know he went there. I was like, you know any photographers there? He was like, oh, I know this guy named Levi. Shot me Levi's Twitter. Levi's lit. Followed Levi on Instagram. Started showing Levi lots of love. Why? Because Levi was dope. I was a photographer trying to make connections. Shout out <coughs> Levi. You know what I'm saying? He was dope. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, it was a it was literally a year and a half of me just being cool with Levi on Instagram. He goes, yo, man, uh, I just got hired by RDC to be a photographer for their event. He had done like some previous photo work mm -hmm. with them. He goes, yo, they need a videographer. They're going to hit you up. I'm driving home from Nashville. I'm literally like at a rest stop. And, and Levi texted me on Instagram. Then you have my number at the time. Texted yeah. me on Instagram. Yo, RDC World's going to hit you up. I'm, I'm sitting there smoking weed with my boy at a rest stop. And I'm like, yo, like, I guess I got to hop on the phone for RDC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I'm in the car back. I'm like, I'm talking to my homie trying to figure out like, yo, what should I charge? Like, what do I even want? Da, da, da. And so eventually get on the phone with John, who's one of the guys at RDC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They hired me out. I did the video. Met Levi there. I met Peyton there. That was last year, summer of 2020. Yep, yep. Did a real good job with the video. They fucked with me, had good energy. They hit me up. The first one was, uh, it was a video game video. And it was like video game character customization. But it was making it was making. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. So I was the white character with all the hairstyles. Okay. And, like Leland was a black guy who had no hairstyles. Gotcha. Just, like, just waves. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, they could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the dreads. Yeah, right, <laughs> And so uh, I went there for that video, and it was real simple. I basically just, like, threw on wigs, and they got, like, a two-second clip, and then I, like, took it off. And I was gone, like, probably 15, 30 minutes. That video did real well. It got almost, like, 10 million views on their channel. Mm -hmm. So they were like, yo, we have this other video idea. You, you ever seen Squid Games? I was like, no, but they had this Squid Games video idea. So they call me. They're like, yo, meet us at Lifetime. Bring a, a gray shirt. Bring a pair of tennis shoes. And don't ask questions. They're like, all right, cool. So I show up there. They have like they got the helmets, bro. They got the suits, all ready for Squid Games. Peyton was there. He show up. Um, I don't know what I'm doing at this point. I'm assuming it's another white guy role, which it was. It was. Right? Yeah. So I'm not surprised. Uh, <laughs> but it, it was it was white people versus black people playing basketball for Squid Games. Like to die. It was so funny. And uh, so yeah, Peyton ended up dunking on us and shattered the rim. Yeah, yeah. So it just started with just like doing the video, being cool, and they were like. We need a white guy. Let me hit him. <laughs> it like, they needed me again. So, uh, but it was cool, bro. Like they're so fun to be around, bro. They're great yeah. guys. Always. They seem to like good laughing. energy. Yeah, man. Yeah, they're so genuine. One yeah. of our uh, the other podcast he does with Steve, keep it a book. Mm -hmm. um, he go. I guess him and um, Mark Phillips go to the same gym, mm -hmm. so they all, they see each other, see each other on the on the basketball court and whatnot. And then um, he was like, "Hey, did you get tickets to?" Uh, DreamCon, he was like, nah, he said, nah, I couldn't or was sold out too fast or whatever. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. And gave him tickets. Yeah. yeah. He's just a dope, genuine person. Yeah. Yeah. His video, his video, they're, they know what they're doing. They're doing yeah. it, man. Bro, they hilarious. know what they're doing. Hilarious, bro. They know what they're doing. They, they, and they're quick with it. That's the good thing. They're yes. quick with it. Um, one last thing for me. Do you, have his, has it, I guess, sunk in yet? Like the, what you've done and the people that you shot and worked with? Like, what, what does that mean to you? I appreciate you asking that. So I had a conversation with a friend of mine named JV. He makes music. And uh, we were sitting at lunch. And I think, I don't know how the conversation started, but it was talking about like just the influence that I have on social media and how I 
I think I think I just didn't understand it, mm-hmm. you know. And he he got real quiet with me and kind of just sat me for a second. He was like, "Bro, like, what are you saying?" He's like, "Bro, there are literally people who look at you and are inspired to chase their dreams. There's people who have literally changed their whole lives because of what they're doing." He's like, "Bro, I've seen it. I, people have told me things you don't even see it." And I was like, "Look, it chills now. It chills and it happened, bro. I just had to sit back and be like, okay." Like if that's if that's real, if I'm really feeling chills like that right now, bro, something's real about that. So then I had to take a step back and say, okay, if JV's saying this and obviously I'm feeling it's real, I need to understand how real it is. Because until I understand how real that is, it's hard for me to go out and impact people the same way. You know what I mean? You know, if I'm just doing things and I don't have intention behind it, bro, what's the fucking point? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Oh, I'm just making content, what's the point? You know what I mean? Bro, I'm not just making content, bro. I literally used to want to fucking kill myself, bro. I was mad depressed. Like, I didn't have friends where people made fun of me. Like, life was as shit as it could fucking be, bro. And now I feel like I'm on 10 every single day, bro. I wake up, I'm grateful, bro. I have friends, I have family. I share love with people around me. And it's like, it seems like such a weird concept when you're on the other side of it and you don't understand, bro. And that's like, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, you know? I don't even know where the question went. No, that's that's, that's what that's I love that. Yeah. No, I need it, that. It, it, it's like, oh yeah, it's about the impact, bro. So like, it it does, bro, and it definitely hits me when I'm listening to their music, and I'm just like, damn, like I really made eye contact with them. Damn, I was really there. Da, da, da. And the hard part about me is, bro, I'm constantly striving for new heights. Mm-hmm. I'm a perfectionist. I'm constantly striving for new goals, new achievements, everything. So for me, it's like I check it off. Boom. Like I have I have a whiteboard in my room of all the people I want to meet, bro. It's an ambitious ass list. Let me tell mm-hmm. you, bro. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Edgar Estevez is on there. Russ is on there. Drake, J. Cole, another person, Tarek Sharif, the co-founder yeah. of Rolling Loud. Guess yeah. what? I got to check on check. that guy. Yeah. Met, okay. him, met him at South by Southwest. We had a good conversation. Oh, yeah. And I sat and I waited. Like he was uh, had an open mic, so I went and asked on the open mic whenever everyone was in the room, and everybody left. And uh Got out the room and he was like taking pictures and answering questions, just like a little meet and greet session. Bro, I waited until like hours, bro. I waited until everybody fucking left so I could be the last one to talk to him, bro. And we sat and talked for like 15, 20 minutes, just one on one, bro. He was real, real with me about what he went through, the sacrifices he made, not having money, what he had to do. Like, talk about all the things I really felt like I was living, you know what I mean? Yep. And even something like that is like, bro, to think like I got a check mark on something like that, bro, that's crazy. It's so crazy. Yeah. But it starts with just just understanding. You know what I mean? Understanding that you have the power to open that possibility. You know what I mean? If I didn't even believe that was possible, bro, wasn't gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But I got out of my own way. Yeah. I took this glass <clears throat> ceiling off that everybody else in the world had put on me. I said, yeah. nope, fuck that. I'm not buying into that. Yeah. And I opened that possibility for anything to happen. And now it's happened. So if I say, man, I know I can impact millions of lives. And change people to go from literally depressed to loving life the same way I did, possibilities open. Now it's my job to step into that role and fulfill the mission. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That was deep. That was powerful. That's, For real. Yeah. That's, I mean, because that kind of like, I'm like rereading what you texted me earlier. And I got to that last last point, And, you know, you just said you had the, that last thing for you. But for me, you said you focus on passion, gratitude, intention, higher purpose, and putting a consistent effort to manifest your dream reality. And then, so kind of that thing, I remember when we had texted earlier, like you just like, are you very like structured person? Is there like things you do daily to kind of get you going in that right path or, you know, work out gratitude checks? Like what's kind of your, your process on things? Absolutely. Yeah. I think everybody should have a daily ritual. I, I like the morning because I think it's yeah. a sacred time before, before you wake up to the world, before you go talk to the kids, before you talk to your friend, before you see your roommate, before you go to the job, before the boss is screaming at you. You got your time. Your time to lock in and do what's important for you. What's important for me? Gratitude. Every morning, I practice gratitude by, I have a journal. I keep it, I have two sides of my, I have an L desk. And one side is like my computer working on my video stuff. And the other side is like working on myself. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? My journaling, my reading. So every morning, I'll write five things I'm grateful for. And and it's not just like, I'm grateful that I have water. I'm grateful I have a chair. I'm grateful. No, it's like, let me, let me just. Yeah. Ground myself. Take a second, ground myself, and stop everything else and say, what am I grateful for? And I write it down. I'm grateful I have this water bottle. And I think about, man, like, there's been times where I've been really parched and I would have fucking done anything for a sip of water. And now it's like, man, I got water here. I got water down here. There's water over there. 
man, I'm blessed. Yeah. Cool. That's one. All right. Number two, you know what I mean? It's not just a fucking, Oh, I got my five things. No, nah, dude. process with intention, doing yeah. things with intention, right? Going through the process. Yeah. So that is big time. Before I even do that though, I get outside, bro. Natural sunlight. Got to get outside. I'll usually like go to like my front driveway or just sit outside and sit there. I usually do a little bit of meditating or just some stretches on the yoga mat. Sometimes I'll go for a little walk, but first thing in the morning, sunlight. And then I usually go in, do the gratitude journaling. Meditation's big too. Meditation, it's like if people, if people are uh, nicotine users, caffeine users, whatever, bro, I highly, highly encourage you to meditate before you ingest any substances in your day. Because like you may not think that nicotine affects you that much or caffeine affects you that much or maybe you smoke weed a lot and weed doesn't affect me that much. It's cool, bro. Fuck that bullshit you're telling yourself and realize, bro, there's two types. I'm so passionate about this. Yeah. Bro. There's two people in the world. There's people who create and there's people who consume. And most people are consumers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most people are consumers, bro. They consume content. They consume fucking drugs. They consume everything from other people. They don't have ideas from themselves. They buy products. They don't do anything. You know what I'm saying? They consume, consume, consume. Bro, we need people like that. We need people like mm-hmm. that. Okay? Yeah. But the other side of it is where the 1% of people are. And then the people who don't conform, the people who are creating. But guess what? The only way you can create is if you create through silence. If you're a, if you, like genuinely, if you are an actual creator, how can you create from consuming other people's ideas? Inspiration is one thing. Yeah. You're not creating anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bro, yeah. if you're an actual creative genius, you just create. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the only way you can actually genuinely create is if you allow yourself that silence to create. You know what I mean? But dude, 99% of people never give themselves silence in a day ever. Yeah. Bro, I used to not. I used to fucking sleep with my phone right next to my bed. I would roll over. Before I did anything, I'm scrolling. God, I wish I could fucking go back and just like punch my younger <laughs> self, slap him out of bed, rip the covers off and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Because bro, Whatever you receive dopamine from first in the morning, bro, we're primal as fuck. We are literally monkeys mm-hmm. going through our days. Yep. Where you receive dopamine first in the morning is where you will continually search for it the rest of the day. <laughs> so guess what? Substances are cool, right? Yeah. Uh, they're not that bad. Okay, well, guess what? First thing in the morning, I rolled over, I hit my jewel, and then I start scrolling on TikTok. Yeah. Good luck, bro. Good luck. I don't sleep with my phone next to my bed. I can't anymore. Bro, what's crazy is you like talking about all that because I just, I don't know if you know who Bradley Martin is and like Liver King. They just had a podcast and I just listened to it today and the Liver King is like all about like, it's like the nine ancestral traits and things like that. And he was talking about like, we go take a shit and we go take our phone to go take a shit. He's like, just go take a shit. Like those are like the things that, and like you're saying, not getting on your phone right away or getting up and actually processing stuff and I, I feel like granted it is hard with the kind of work we do because it's like well maybe I got a text or email or whatever overnight or something like that but still just being able to take that time at 30 minutes to allow yourself to just be free be present not be be unplugged really like we're always on something we're always doing something you I mean get for me at least like my silence is going to into the sauna for 20 30 minutes and just sitting <laughs> I love there, you say and that, just bro. sitting there and fighting bro just de- just mine, fighting it that's mine, mine is, too, bro. I yeah I, guess, I don't know if mine's weird or not. Yeah. mine's a shower Love Same shower. thing. Shower. Love a shower. Yeah. My, my best thoughts and ideas come when I'm just in the shower. Do you shower with music or without music? Without. It's yeah. beautiful. That's yeah. good. Without. I feel like a rest of this, but you feel like a fucking baby coming out of the womb, yeah. so fresh and fucking warm. Like, ah, dude. Yeah, just without. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, the social media thing that you're talking about, it's a big thing. I, uh, I've i almost been off social media for a year now. I'm going to get back on, just taking a detox. But I've almost been off social media for a year now. It's nice. Because, yeah, I mean, yes, it's hard at first because you're constantly, like, you're just, you're so accustomed just going, like, it's natural, 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 just going to clicking the app, clicking the app, and it's not there anymore. And you just, it's self-control for you not to re-download it. And for some people, it's hard because that's just what they do all the time, just Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. Um, but I just turn my phone upside down, put it somewhere else, and went on without my day. And it's, it, you you realize how much of the time you waste on the social media apps when you don't have them. And it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And you think about people who like, man, I don't have time to do this, this, this. And you're like, 
for screen sure. time look like? Yeah. yeah. Show me that. Yeah. Yeah, because I know you were on TikTok. I know you uh, brought your phone in the bathroom when you took a shit. There's no way you shot for 25 minutes. Nope. You brought it when you were eating too. So now what turned into a fucking five, 10 minute meal, you got up after 45 minutes. That's why restaurants take so long. There's a fact that that's why Tom's on restaurants are right because of people are yeah, on the phone. Yeah, for real. And it's like, mm-hmm. that's supposed to be the time where you really like convince yourself. And I mean, we're obviously all got to improve in ways, but like you said, just taking those those little steps, like waking up, not touching your phone. Or for me, like I'm gonna literally not take my phone and go take a shit now, cause like yeah. I don't need to. You know what I mean? Hang just, up and hang out. Yeah. So, no, no phones, just vibing. No phones, just vibing. D and D. I'm always on D and D. Yeah. Me too. You know what I mean, uh, I read that you're talking about social media. So I read yeah. this book called Deep Work. I don't know if you read it. It's by Cal Newport. Okay. Great fucking read, especially what we're doing in our work is on the internet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, bro? People could tell me. Delete social media. It's good for you. It's good for you. Guess what, bro? I'm making full time money on social media. I'm yeah. not gonna fucking mm-hmm. delete it. Yeah. Okay? I'm not an idiot. Yeah. Right. But guess what? You have to recognize, like, like the the benefits and the negative side of it. You know what I mean? Because it's so easy to think I need to check mess or like justify I need to check my messages because it's part of my work. Yeah. When really, like, oftentimes it's not. And you're just giving yourself a reason to go check the app. And then, so through this book, Deep Work, he talks about two different types of work, deep work and shallow work. Deep work is highly intense, very focused, no distractions. Phone's gone, laptop's gone, I don't got music on, I'm not in Discord with my homie, you know what I'm saying? There's no dog, there's no fucking girlfriend, nothing. It is me and whatever the fuck I gotta do. Everything else is blocked out. And then you got shallow work, which is everything else. That's, oh, I'm working while I'm on a call. That's, I'm checking email. That's, I'm responding to messages. That's, I'm responding to DMs, all that stuff, like, bro, yeah, you should stop and be intentional about the messages you're sending. I already know you do that, you know what I mean? But I'm telling you, because I know where, like, anytime I post something, I get DMs, I get messages, mm. and it's like, yeah, I can't, I can't do this too much stimulation. Check it all at, one, uh, all at once at a later exactly. da- at a later time, you know I mean? yeah. <laughs> I, this is my 15, 20 minute, I'm gonna respond to everything, yeah, yeah, yep, yep, and I'm out. Peace. Yeah. Because it's just, it's so, I know you know, it's yeah. so taxing on the mental to feel like, yeah. oh, Oh, I'm checking Instagram, waiting for this person to respond. Dude, I move everything to SMS as soon as I can. Bro, I don't keep notifications on for any social media. I keep notifications on for my, my SMS, my phone calls. I have a D&D where I have people who can ring through on the first ring. Yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, like, bro, like, like you know what I mean? Not fuck off, but like, there's a reason. That yeah, I yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And it maxes yeah. out. So like, you know, you can't put everybody. On. Yeah. I have a lot of people on there. But bro, D&D for text messages specifically, like, bro. If, if I got it, I don't have my phone in my pocket yeah. right now, but like if I got a text right now and I'm not on D&D or my phone is not on silent, I literally feel just like, like consciously, I feel like all my attention is leading the front of my brain. I'm like projecting outward here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was meditating one time. I was at the park and I brought my phone so I could record videos. Just I did the series called Creek Talk and I was walking okay. in the creek just talking. I brought my phone. But I always started with just finding a, a rock and just meditating, touching the water a little bit, just meditating, grounding myself before I move forward. I was meditating one time. Sun is just beaming on my face, dude. I'm literally feeling like I'm leaving my body, bro. I can't even fucking explain it. It's so powerful. And I get a, someone starts calling me, bro. And I, like I said, I feel like my, my focus is here, bro. It literally retracts back into my body and goes to my, dude, I literally got so pissed off. I was so angry. I was just, it took me out of it, bro. And, and like I said, I'm a creative genius, bro. So if I'm in the middle of doing something so fucking important or I'm having a conversation, bro, this is what I'm doing right now. Yep. Yeah. I'm not doing anything else. Absolutely. So I don't, bro, people be checking their phones in the middle of shoots. Oh, I just pulled up to wherever, or I got in my car. Let me just check my phone out real quick. It happened to my homie the other day when we were in Arizona and we had been like, we had, at the seminar all day. Mm-hmm. We're at the seminar and we get back in the car. We haven't been on our phone probably 12 hours at this point. Get back in and I see him. First thing he does is throw up his phone over on Instagram. I said, what are you doing? He said, I don't know, bro. <laughs> like we said, bro, it's so subconscious, but people yeah. don't even understand. Yep. So now it's like, okay, the reason it's so important to give myself that silence in the morning is so I can now make that my norm. Because if my norm is checking my phone and da da da, nah, bro, my norm needs to be me fucking being okay with being present and being here. Mm-hmm. I'm not anxious for anything else. I don't need something to run my subconscious mind because I'm here. Mm-hmm. I'm observing what's going on. Being in the I'm moment, the conversation. Big. That's all we got, bro. Yep. Sorry, it's all we got. No, you're good. You know what I'm saying? That was yeah. one of my uh, 
big, uh, I guess, flaws that I had was not being in the moment. And uh, over the year, I've, uh, I've learned, and I'm better at being in the moment and just being put wherever. Uh, mm-hmm. What what Ricky said, and keep 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 my uh, keep my eyes where my feet are. Yeah, yeah, keep my eyes where my feet are, yeah. and that just. It's what I try to do every day, and, 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 it, and it helps a lot. It's the, yeah. it's the yin and yang of life. Like, you're going to have those ups and downs. I mean, high moments, low moments, but that's what makes life life. You know, like yeah. you got to be present in those moments. So, yeah. that the was, reason I, yeah, I just want to add this, I think, I think meditation is mm-hmm. so important is because no one teaches you this. Your parents don't teach you this. At least mm-hmm. mine didn't. Parents didn't teach me. My teachers didn't teach me. Friends, nobody. I learned off some YouTuber that I ended up finding, right? Meditation is a bicep curl for your mind and for your your mindfulness muscle, your presence muscle. If I don't practice that, how the fuck am I ever gonna be present? Like, yeah, I may have those moments where I'm flown, but then I, I'm out of it. And then it's like, oh, I gotta bring myself back in. That's what meditation is, baseline, is let me, let me, I'm breathing, focused on my breath. Okay, my thoughts wandering. I catch my thought wandering. I recognize that I'm wandering. I go back to the breath. It's a circle. That's meditation. You know what I mean? And each time that I catch myself and I bring it back to the breath, bicep curl. That's one. You know what I mean? And once I catch myself and I go back to the breath, I'm still here. My eyes are still closed. I'm still here present with myself. You know what I mean? But I'm practicing bringing that awareness back. Because when it comes time, when I'm fucking in a conversation and I'm staring at them and they're talking to me and they're talking to me and I'm not listening and then I catch myself just looking at them, bro, were they just looking at me, fucking mindlessly staring at them in the conversation? Like, how shitty is that? Yep. How shitty is it if I have a romantic partner in front of me that I can't even enjoy, like, sex, for example. I can't enjoy a, a naked woman in front of me because I'm so mindless. Yeah. I'm so not in the present. I'm so anxious. I'm so worried about whatever else. I got insecurities because I'm fucking watching porn and jacking off. And now I have a woman <laughs> who likes me and is about to have sex with me. And I'm not here. I'm not here with her. How disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's not just with women. It goes to the conversation. It goes to my business partners. It goes to being here at the podcast. It goes when I'm talking to Jory. It goes when I'm on the phone with my mom, my grandpa. Bro, fucking everything. You know what I mean? If I'm petting the dog here, I'm petting the dog. I don't need to be checking my phone. You know what I mean? It just, it takes you away. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And meditation is something where you practice bringing it back. I mean, even when, I'm, for me, one of the, like, my, be- my biggest pet peeves is, like, you go out with your friends, your boys, whatever, your girl, whatever, and, like, everyone's just like always on their phone checking this doing this posting this like even lately for me i'm not i've been one of those people if i go do something on a vacation and stuff obviously i'm gonna take videos and photos for the moment but a lot of people you just you just know when people are just going out or going on vacations and they're just posting every single thing they do it's like are you even enjoying what you're doing like you're just doing it for the camera yeah, you want or, other people or like or like when people are like f- phone eats first i'm like what your phone eats first. Like, okay, cool. The food looks cool, good and you want to send it to your whoever. That's fine. But I feel like just posting that, it's like phone eat first. Like, you know what I'm saying? So there's all kind of ways to, you know, dis- dissect it and stuff. But right, right. Yeah. A game I like to play would be like if we go to dinner, I would, I would get everybody, put their phones on the table and be like, first one who pulls buys tip for every, either pays for tip for everybody or pays for everybody's meal. Yep. I'm never losing that game. Me yeah. <laughs> phone stack. Yeah. Uh, what time are we at on that? 25 yeah, we can just wrap I mean, it up yeah yeah um I mean, that was pretty much everything for me do you have anything for us before we had i've been talking for about an hour and a half now i mean we can keep talking i could talk to you all day good energy That's good vibes too, yeah, yeah. yeah. good energy, energy good vibes yeah. and I, I, vibes. I, love, I genuinely love the conversation that yeah, we're having it was super good um, man good analogies it's very powerful yeah. so, um do you have anything for us that. before we hit this off man follow me everywhere malin white m-a-h-l-o-n that's me Lavelle, L-E-V-V-E-L, media, M-E-D-I-A, Instagram, YouTube, everything. Changing the world, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, One day sure. at a time. Um, but y'all know how we do it. You know we're going to have all his description, I mean, information in the description below. Run up his numbers. Run up his likes. Run up his you, videos on YouTube or anything. Absolutely. Hey, run up yeah, I'm going to have to check those out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm on it. Um, but that'll do it for your boys over here at Opinionated. We'll catch y'all guys next time. Peace. Peace.